All right, so your unit exam, guys, on Tuesday on unit three, I think is going to contain, obviously, all the stuff that we've talked about, okay? Um, problem solving questions of the types that you have had on your assignments, okay, and on your worksheets. Uh, but I'll go over some specifics here today uh, so you can kind of focus your studying over the weekend. I did post a unit exam review package yesterday on Google Classroom, so you have access to that uh, over the weekend if you want to look at it. All right, so we started out with uniform circular motion. And we talked about um, the principles of circular motion. If something is moving in a circle, it's moving at a constant speed, even though it's not moving at a constant velocity, okay? How is that possible? How can it be traveling at a constant speed while always accelerating? Well, that would be um, like if it's in orbit. I'm talking any uniform circular motion. If I'm just whirling something around and around. Right. Only its direction is being changed, okay? It's traveling at a constant speed but its vector is always changing. It's always being pulled towards the center. It just has enough inertia that it never goes closer to the center because of its speed. All right, so uh, there's, there's, if in order for uniform circular motion to occur, we have to have a force that is pulling okay, to the center, producing an acceleration towards the center. Okay, so that means constant speed, changing velocity, Okay, changing the direction or the vector of the velocity is all that we're doing, right? But any change in velocity is acceleration, and any acceleration requires a net force. That net force is the centripetal force, right? That's the principle of circular motion. There's probably going to be a few multiple choice questions about that. All right, that first day we talked about B equals 2 pi r over t, right, which we now know can also be substituted into other formulas, okay, if necessary. We talked about how period, that's capital T, is 1 over f, or it's the inverse of frequency. So the period is the time for one revolution, one cycle, it's seconds per cycle, okay. Frequency is the number of cycles per second or time, whatever the time interval is, it's the inverse. So hertz, cycles per second, T period, seconds per cycle, right? Um, then we talked about uh, unbanked corners, masses on strings, okay, like the thing I was whirling around there, okay? Um, and we talked about artificial gravity. We also talked about banked curves. Those are all examples of uniform circular motion. Even satellite motion is still an example of uniform circular motion. So we went over basically all these formulas over the first couple of days. So any one of those could be used, okay, um, obviously on a question on this test. We didn't do very much with centripetal acceleration, so I wouldn't spend too much time looking for problems involving it. Like there are Just know what it is. Okay, what holds you in an unbanked corner? Friction. Okay, that means friction acts as our centripetal or net force. Okay, and um, if we have a mass on a string, what keeps what acts as the centripetal force there? The tension and strength. Right. Um, in artificial gravity. Yeah, the surface of the circle, right? It's pushing on your feet back towards the center, okay? Uh, so there's always going to be in all of these situations some force acting as a centripetal force. Then we talked about banked curves. Bank curves work a little bit differently, but all we do with a bank curve is essentially make an inclined plane where the normal force is angled so that it has a component that is acting back towards the center. That component acts as the centripetal force, and we derive the formula for bank curves from there. Now, you never have to derive that formula, but you do need to know how to use it. 
Okay, it is on the front page of your test. There is a problem on bank curve. So you need to know how to use the bank curve formula. And there's a few multiple choice questions as well about bank curves and why we have them and what purpose they serve. Okay, the big thing in this unit is being able to identify what's acting as the centripetal force. Very much like what was in the last, in the unit before this, where we had to identify all the forces acting to find the net force. In this unit, we just have to know what's acting as the centripetal force because that is the net force. Okay. Then after uniform circular motion, we went to vertical circular motion. Sorry, this is artificial gravity. I take it back, this is artificial gravity. Because it would be very difficult to do that anywhere. Okay. So in artificial gravity, okay, we want the centripetal force to feel like gravity, even though it's being provided by the normal force from the surface. That pushes back towards the center, okay, as we discussed a few minutes ago. Okay. That means mv squared over r equals m times g, and the m's cancel, okay, and we're left with um, basically v squared over r equals g. Did you expect an artificial gravity question? Yep. I mean, they're, they're pretty straightforward. It's mv squared over r equals mg. They're not hard. Okay? Just know that um, there could be a multiple choice question about that as well. OK, so that was about the first uh, quarter to third of the unit. OK, it was just uniform circular motion principles and then examples of it. And then we went to non-uniform or vertical circular motion, okay, where the general rule is that Fc equals forces in minus forces out. Okay, calculating again the net force in every situation. We are only dealing with three situations. Okay, we're dealing with. Um, I'm just going to erase these and redraw them because they're a mess. All right, so our general rule, centripetal force, is forces in minus forces out. Remember that anytime you see the word apparent weight, they're talking about normal force. Okay? And the situations we dealt with were the bottom on the inside of a vertical circle. Okay? What force is this? Gravity. What force is this? normal force, okay? So Fc equals Fn minus Fg, the bottom on the inside, okay? We also talked about this point on the circle. Okay. What's different about that situation than the other two? Uh, well, I can feel weightless in another one. There's what? No force normal. Uh, there could be a force normal. But if there isn't, what am I traveling at? Uh, are we talking about the second one? Yeah, the second one. <laughs> right. There's only forces in in this situation, and there's a minimum speed. If I don't go fast enough, I'll fall out of this circle. I can't fall out of the circle here, and when I'm going over the top, I can't fall out of the circle either. This is the only situation where there's a minimum speed that has to be maintained or attained in order to go around the circular path. Okay? So gravity is always going to be present in this situation. It's why there is a minimum speed. Okay? What's the other force that may or may not be present? Force normal. If I'm traveling at the minimum speed, normal force will be zero because I won't push on the track, the track won't push on me, and I'll feel weightless. Okay? Um, but if I am traveling faster than the minimum speed, which you usually are, okay, then the track will push back and you will feel some apparent weight in that situation. But the big thing is there's no forces out at the top on the inside of a vertical circle. And then there's the last situation going over the top of the vertical circle. What force is this? It's what? Gravity. Gravity. And this one? Normal force. If I go really fast, what will happen to the normal force? Yeah, I'll get apparent weightlessness. It will become zero. Okay. The 
faster I go, the smaller normal force becomes until I go fast enough that I have a feeling of apparent weight okay. All right, so that's, those are the three situations that you have to remember. If you've got a vertical circular motion question, draw the diagram, it's worth the mark, it's part of your givens. Helps you figure out this part. Okay. And you could be asked for any number of things. You could be asked for just the apparent weight, or you could be given the apparent weight and asked for the speed, or asked for the radius. Okay. Any one of those things. All right. Questions on that? Okay. So expect a vertical circular motion problem for sure okay. in the written response, and probably at least one, if not two, vertical circular motion multiple choice questions. Okay, then we moved on to the last third of this unit, which was all about gravitation, satellites, and gravity fields. So, universal gravitation, it is affected by the masses involved, linearly, okay, and the distance between their centers in what way? So, if I double the mass, I'll double the force of gravity, but if I double the separation distance, what will happen to the force of gravity? It decreases exponentially, right? Okay, and that's because, okay, the formula looks like this. The force of gravity between two objects, and that's the important part, it's mutual. There's a couple of multiple choice questions about the mutual nature of the attraction gravitationally between two objects, okay? Um, it's dependent on big G times mass one times mass two divided by R squared. If we're going to get a satellite to orbit the Earth, it is this force that acts as our centripetal force. Okay? So that is the basis for all satellite motion, Fc equals Fg. Okay? And that is the one where you may or may not have to substitute V equals 2 pi r over t in for V. There are also going to be a couple of multiple choice questions about satellite motion, mostly about how it is achieved. If you're going to make something orbit the Earth, what do you have to do? Uh, faster than eight kilometers per per second, right? Okay. That way, the distance it falls is equal to the distance. Uh, not so much rotates, but curves away, right? So the Earth is round, so if I go eight kilometers in one second and fall four and a half meters, the Earth curves away four and a half meters. I never get any closer to the Earth, thus I orbit the Earth at a constant height, okay? All right, that was Newton's thought experiment, remember? He didn't want to carry the cannon up to the top of the mountain and he didn't have a powerful enough cannon anyway, so he just said, I'm Newton and I think this will work. And everyone went, okay, sounds good. All right. Um, then we also talked about Kepler. There's some multiple choice stuff about Kepler. Okay. He's got three laws. The law of elliptical orbits, the law of equal areas, which is what that pi thing is, okay. and um, the law of periods. That's that whole T1 squared over R1 cubed equals T2 squared over R2 cubed. No calculations involving Kepler. Okay, so you won't have to use that. It, the formula is on your formula sheet. T1 over T1 squared over R1 cubed equals T2 squared over R2 cubed. It's on there, but you're not going to have to use it unless you want to. There's actually a question where you could use it, but we haven't gone over a lot of the calculations because I was trying to gain some time back. Okay, and so since you don't need to use Kepler to solve a satellite question. All right. Uh, also, no Cavendish. Okay, Cavendish was important. We watched that little video there on the, um, you know, the 
hole involved and the meter stick with the weights on it and how they uh, attracted each other and how that was used to calculate what big G was. Okay, so it could be multiple choice about that. Okay, and then lastly, gravitational field strength. Okay, uh, I know that in the notes, because I had a few people ask me this because there was some confusion, so I just want to quickly go over it again. In the notes for gravitational field strength, it says this. Little g equals the force of gravity divided by m, which is absolutely true. It's just a manipulation of this. Okay. Problem is, we don't know what g is. We're trying to calculate it, and we may not know what the weight is at that point. So we substitute in for fg, Newton, let me do this. When we do that, what happens to the little mass? It cancels out because all things would have the same gravitational acceleration or experience the same gravitational field strength at that particular location. Right? That's where that formula, which will be on the front of your exam and is on your formula sheet, comes from. How will you know when to use that? When it says gravitational field strength in bold-faced, italicized, and underlined font in the question. That's your second. Uh, I told you that. I'm really trying to break the cycle here. All right, and then all the other little stuff, okay? Make sure, you know, apparent weight, okay, is Fn. That's the second time we've said that today, okay? And watch out for this. In satellite questions and in gravitational field strength questions, they may try to trick you with the words above the surface, height, or altitude. If they are giving you those numbers, are they giving you R? No. Okay. You will have to add the radius of that body onto that number in order to get your true radius, because radius is always center to center. Okay. So even on your uh, other useful constants, when they give the average Earth-Sun distance, that is measured from the center of the Earth to the center of the Sun. Okay. All right. Let's talk specifically about your test. There are 15 multiple choice questions. One, five. All right, front page of the test has your useful constants, acceleration due to gravity, ca uh, Cavendish's constant, average Earth moon, average Earth sun distances, average radius of the Earth, mass of the Earth, mass of the moon, mass of the sun. And then it's got all of the formula thus far in this unit, including Kepler, which you probably won't need. Okay. Um, oh, what a nice guy I am. I forgot I did that, and now I've already printed them. I even put the manipulation of FC with the substituted. I should look more closely at them. It's too late, because they're already printed, so it's there. Okay, so stuff that's in the multiple choice, as we were saying, okay, um, uniform circular motion, just understanding what affects it, okay, the principles of it. There are a number of questions about simply the principles of uniform circular motion, okay. There is one multiple choice question that is an acceleration, a centripetal acceleration problem. But it's in the multiple choice, so that tells you how easy it is. Um, there's questions about bank curves, okay? Not calculation questions, just how they work. 
there is some, there are some questions about vertical circular motion, again, the principles of it, not calculations. A couple of questions about gravitation slash satellite motion. And then there's a contextual question that is probably the toughest multiple choice question on the test. So I'm going to tell you the context of it. I want you, as part of your studying over the weekend, to maybe do a little tiny bit of research about how these things work. They're called merry go rounds Okay, maybe go to the playground. Okay. Or watch a couple of funny YouTube videos about merry-go-round. Remember I showed you one where everybody got thrown off because they powered them with motorcycles. Right? Um, so this question is about circular motion, the principles of circular motion, but the context is a merry-go-round. Okay? It has to do with um, the factors that affect centripetal force, mass, speed, and radius. Okay? The context is a merry-go-round. Okay, then there's Kepler, which we said would be on there. There's a question about what Newton thinks about gravity. Uh, more principles of circular motion, more principles of circular motion, gravity, that's it. Okay, your written response section has eight problems. It is out of 33. So this is your shortest test. It's only out of 48. Okay? Your other ones have been like 60 and 50 something. So this is by far your shortest one. Okay. Um, all right. In the written response, on bank curves, bank curves. Gravitational field strength, not necessarily in this order. Vertical circular motion. Um, universal gravitation combined with net force. Satellite motion. Actually, there's two satellite motion questions and a, a uh, artificial gravity problem. That's it. That's what's on there. You can. All right, are there questions from you guys? Anything we need to go over? Or that you'd like to ask? Okay, well, I put the um, review package obviously on Google Classroom. Maybe now's a good time to have a look at that to see if any other questions come up. And I'd be happy to answer them.